We're at the Hand Surgery Institute of Orange County and we're with Dr. Julio Telesnik, a very notable hand surgeon in Orange County for many years, and our special guest patient, Barbara Browning. We're going to talk about a very common ailment, carpal tunnel syndrome. Dr. Telesnik, why don't you tell us about what is carpal tunnel syndrome and who gets it and why do we get it? Syndrome is a term that states that there, is, there are a number of reasons why something happens that is that ends in a common denominator, which is a loss of full function of a nerve that traverses within the carpal tunnel. This is a hand, the right hand from the palmar aspect. This is a drawing of a right hand from the palmar aspect, and we just simply remove the skin to show the structures that are beneath. These two bundles are muscle. This controls the little finger, and this controls the thumb. So this bundle and this bundle are represented here by these two bundles. And across the two goes a membrane, like my finger will go across uh, the hand here. Uh, that membrane is called transverse carpal ligament. Now beneath the membrane runs this rod that you go see past that, that transverse ligament. And this rod is the median nerve, goes underneath that transverse carpal ligament, and then it divides into branches that go to one, two, three, and a half digits normally. So when that nerve is compromised in function, then the symptoms will reside amongst uh, these three digits. Most of the time, the central two. People get numbness and tingling, particularly at night, mm -hmm. awakens them from a, sound, from a sound sleep. If you look at this like that and you cut across and you want to see the end on, a, ver a version of that, the rod will look like a dot that you cut across and the membrane will look like a line. If I have the nerve going under my hand and you look at the end on section, mm -hmm. the nerve will look like a dot and the membrane, the carpal tunnel membrane, will look like a line. What we do in surgery is we use an incision that is about like a seven, cut that ligament, and when we cut the ligament, it opens up and it decompresses the nerve from the pressures that are contained within the carpal tunnel. Ms. Browning is here at an ideal time because she's, she's you're what, Eight days after surgery? Yeah, eight days. And this is a dressing that she's been wearing uh, since three days after surgery. We usually have a, a big dressing that we remove uh, about three days after surgery so that they can go back to function with their hand. Oh, great. And this is the, uh, the incision. Uh, I guess we can show it like this. And you, you see the tiny little transverse portion and then the longitudinal portion. This white um, worm under the suture is simply to help uh, my a cast take to remove the sutures. Uh, he just goes over the loops that go over the white and then cut the loops and just pulls them out on the other side. And, and then she can get back to normal activity what period of time? At three to four days we encourage her to return to normal. The only thing that she doesn't do is get the dressings wet. Mm -hmm. And if she gets them wet, she dries the hand, puts some new dry dressings and that's right. all there is to it. What is the cure rate from this, if I can ask, or the well, symptom cu uh, Cure, cure is, uh, is, is not a, a good term, sure. but relief of symptoms is very, very consistent. It's well, well over 90%. Oh, really? Well over 90 yeah, I can assure a patient like Ms. Browning that if she comes to me not being able to sleep the night before surgery, that the day we do the surgery, that night, in spite of the pain from surgery, she would be able to go through the night without awakening. Right. Okay. So, Barbara, what were your symptoms before? Well, I wasn't getting any sleep from the... Uh, the wrist hurting so bad mm -hmm. and coming down my fingers and uh, like Dr. Tlesing said, it would go up the arm, but I don't have any of that now. And he did this one a year ago mm -hmm. and it really is has been wonderful for mm -hmm. me and I couldn't wait to get this one done, but I had to wait because my husband got ill. So, and and so, you got relief immediately oh, almost yes, the next immediately, day? Immediately. Immediately. I slept, like he said, the first night. I slept where before I might get two hours sleep a night. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and it was hard going around in a stupor all day, and that's what I did. But did you, now I'm getting. A did you have full symptoms night. in the daytime or just at night? Um, it hurt during the day, and lots of times I would put a wrist brace on, trying to get relief, mm -hmm. and put different things that you get at the drugstore and what have on, you know, and all. But it just did not help, and so um, I knew I had yeah. to have it done. That's fantastic. So when you, if you get these symptoms. Do you think that it should be op they should be operated on s sooner than later? Is there permanent damage, or should you try like anti-inflammatory drugs or something else before? Well, to, to us, the decision as to whether to proceed with surgery or not is not mine, but the patient's. 
The exception is when they come to a situation where they have what we call constant numbness mm -hmm. and there is evidence of progressive neurological deficit. And by neurological, I mean a deficit of nerve function so that they lose the ability to lift their thumb, they get weakness of some of the little muscles in the hand that are supplied by that nerve. When that progression is seen, mm -hmm. we advise the patients to have the surgery done. Most of the time they come to us requesting that the surgery be done before they get to that point. So you try conservative treatment first. Yeah, and if that we try to, to uh, you know, inject them. And uh, another uh, thing that we use is, is splinting. Mm -hmm. But we use the splinting only at night. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, one of the reasons people get the night symptoms is that uh, as you fall asleep, you tend to drop your wrist. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you drop your wrist, you crowd the elements within the carpal tunnel and the nerve gets compressed, wakes them up from a sound sleep, they get out of bed, shake their hand until they get the blood supply back to their hand, and then they go back to sleep until they are awakened again. I see. And that was kind of what happened to you, huh? Yes, it was. And the surgery takes how long? Four minutes. <laughs> she is a different patient. You usually use about 10 to 11 minutes, but in her case, because she had this swelling of the arm following uh, breast surgery, yeah. uh, we, we had to do it. Uh, faster than, very than usual, very quickly. And, and the characteristic symptoms um, are, are what you go by. You do, you do the surgery based on the symptoms of the patient. And sometimes there's, I think, there's a nerve conduction study where you can measure the nerve. Um, yes, we do nerve conduction studies. They usually simply are done to confirm the diagnosis. This is a clinical diagnosis. Yeah. Okay. We do it on the basis of our examination of patients and the patient's symptoms and history. And the success rate is about? Very high. Very high. In the 90% range, something oh, yeah, like that? very high. Well, that's very interesting. It's a common problem, and it looks like you have a good cure for it, uh, symptom cure for it. Relief, symptom yeah. relief, yes, it's good. Well, thanks for coming here today, Barbara. I'm glad you did well. Welcome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. I hope great. it helps someone else. I think it will. Leo, thanks for coming. Thank you for inviting me. So if a patient comes in and they're saying my hand is numb, how do you reassure them that it's not a stroke, for instance? That it's not a clot that went to the brain and damaged some of the nerve cells in the brain? Uh, those are entirely different sets of symptoms. And uh, people that have uh, a central nervous, nervous problem, like a stroke, for instance, mm -hmm. will have symptoms throughout the entire upper extremity. This is very localized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like having a, a, a telephone cable that is cut and it goes to that telephone. The telephone next door to that, still working fine. It's not as if somebody had come to the telephone company, the central office, and bombed it. Then everything is out of function. Mm -hmm. This is a very localized, and uh, the distribution is extremely typical for that nerve. So using a keyboard is not going to really influence what's but happening. The with keyboard, them. like all activities, will tend to produce in or increase symptoms but it doesn't cause the disease, nice. which is a very substantial difference. That's very interesting. I learned a lot. Thank you for coming today. Appreciate it a lot. Thank you for inviting me.